Warning, this episode of Talking to the Dead contains swearing and is only suitable for mature audiences. This is Talking to the Dead with Janet Kubik. I'm your host, Joe Oliva. Please allow me to introduce you to the star of the show, your friend and mine, Janet Kubik. Hello. I'm giggling again. I can't help it every time. You like the intro? <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. It's, uh, it's quaint. Yeah. I love that I'm everybody's friend. That makes me feel good. Yeah. I don't know. I, I've heard that expression over the years, but it's true with you. Oh, thank You're you. You're everybody's friend. Do you have any enemies? <laughs> Do you have any enemies in the world? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Let's keep it that way. Um. Good. Speaking of friends, I hope that we um, have a friendly visit today. I'm going to explain to people what happened when we were scheduling today's show. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So usually Janet and I talk a few days ahead of time. We schedule our Zoom call and then say, okay, what are we going to do? Um, last week we brought on uh, Kayla and Chris, which was fun. Yes. Aren't they a lovely couple? Yeah, they're totally awesome. Really, yeah. really nice people. Yeah. Yes. And um, so, but this week, when we were discussing who to bring on the show or which topic to speak about, you had Spirit come forward and say something like, I've got this, I'll take the time slot. But you weren't even yeah. sure who it was. So at this no. point in time, I've been curious for a, for a few days now. <laughs> I know, you keep texting me. Do you know who it is yet? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I, I have no idea who it is. We're really flying by the seat of our pants. Is that the expression? Yeah. Um, so how are you or what's going on over there in your world? So I'm good, number one. Um, but yeah, this is really um, different and really interesting. Um, in this moment, I'm still not entirely sure who, um, who has booked this uh, time slot with us today. I think the statement I heard originally when we were talking about what to talk about, I feel like the person said something like, well, you can talk to me or talk to me, something along those lines. But then I, I never really sort of pursued who it was. Um, I think I did that for a couple of reasons. One, because sometimes if I connect with an energy ahead of time, or for example, like last week when we were talking um, with Kayla and Chris, if, if I know who I'm going to, uh, or if, that I'm going to be talking to someone, their spirit people show up ahead of time. So yeah. it's it like- ruins I your day. It, ru it ruins your, not ruins your day, but it- no. like, it's like if you're busy cooking and someone keeps calling you on the phone, right? Yes. Keeps yes. interrupting you. Yeah, you're doing stuff. Yeah, with sort of these random messages, right? Um, so I think I have sort of almost deliberately um, pushed this energy or this spirit sort of back and said, you can just wait until we go live and then we will see. But in doing that, it's a little bit scary because um, there's like no prep. It's like, I was thinking about it the other day and it's almost like when you do a one-on-one -on -one or you, you know, connect like this, it's almost like taking an exam that you, you can't study for. Right. Right. It's like, you just have to kind of show up. So it is a very interesting and a little bit almost of an intimidating um, experience, but that's okay. So with all of that said, I had an interesting experience last night, like you said, kind of just doing stuff around the house. And I had this, image image sort of sense combination kind of a thing of someone coming into my house and it wasn't scary it was just like somebody was showing up like open the door walked in the house and again I didn't feel sort of any kind of intimidation by this at all it, it was almost as if somebody just was sort of like saying okay I'm here I'm ready to go and then I almost had this sense that it was today's guest, whoever that is, um, that they had shown up already. 
and that they were kind of hanging out in the living room waiting <laughs> for their well, moment. They, so, they slept. They slept on the sofa right behind you. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> um, so that was kind of a weird thing. I hadn't really had that before. It didn't bother me. I was just sort of like, okay, well, if you're here, that's fine. Um, as long as you stay put and you know you don't interrupt or interfere with anything going on, then that, then I'm okay with that. Um, my first impressions of the energy were that it was male um, and older, like an older gentleman. Um, and then it almost felt like there might be some sort of connection to this person where an entrance was part of their thing or their shtick or part of how they're known somehow that that's connected to them. The idea of like walking through the door, showing up. Um, so I don't really know what that means, but that's what I was getting. Um, and then I started getting the sense of almost like a comedic actor or a comedian of some sort. So those were the pieces that I was kind of getting ahead of time. And then just shortly before we went live today and, and before you and I connected, um, I kept hearing the name George Carlin. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not um, overly aware of this actor or this person. Um, I, I'm definitely familiar with the name, and I feel like I do have a visual like that I remember seeing of him. I was sort of like a low ponytail kind yep. of thing. Sure, um, at some point, yeah. Yeah, so that's how I remember seeing him. Um, but I just keep getting that name. I just keep getting that name over and over and over again. <clears throat> and with that said, now that is a spirit. <clears throat> and the energy is starting <clears throat> to amp up. He's kind of like, I wanted to let you get through your, your shtick or your, your whatever you needed to say before I actually stepped in. So I'm here. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. Um, I know you've all missed me. So obviously I'm assuming that, that he has passed. Yes. Well, okay. <laughs> let me fill you in on George Carlin. I'm a big George Carlin fan. Oh, that was the other piece. He said to me that you would know him well. And you would be, he said, you would know him well and you would be glad to have the opportunity to chat with him. That was the other thing that came forward. Yeah. I actually, um, <clears throat> on, so we're recording this on a Wednesday. On Saturday, so four days ago, I watched him on um, it was a it was a channel that they were just showing George Carlin clips over and over and over again. And I went Are to it. Are you kidding me? No, and I went to it, and I just turned it on, and I was I was in a massage chair at my desk. Oh, sweet! <laughs> and it was like yeah, it was like the perfect world, right? You get George Carlin comedy and a massage at the same time. Although I don't like regular massages, the massage chair I don't mind. So. Okay, good to know. Future reference. Yeah, future reference. In case um, I need to yeah, buy you something. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, he was an amazing <clears throat> comedian. I know a little bit about him because I am quite a fan. Um, he was a real um, anti-establishment. Well, you know what, Joe? I'm actually going to stop you, if you don't mind. Sure. And kind of let him... He's there right now. In? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, oh, he's here. He's here for okay. sure. And when you when you mentioned the um, when you mentioned Saturday, um, he I, I had the validation sort of chills. I call them or like the tingles. Um, and he's like, yeah, don't think like any of this happens by accident. He's okay. definitely got it. He's definitely got a bit of an edge. He's a oh, bit yeah. edgy. Okay, because he's not like rude. He's not being rude to me at all. Like he's, but he's just kind of kind of a bit of an edgy kind of guy. Is the way I would sort of explain it um yeah he's like don't think for a second that that was that that was any kind of um coincidence he's like i was i was teasing you he's like it was like a teaser i was like leading up to <laughs> leading up to my big moment today coming through from the other side yeah <laughs> and it's funny because we're, we're we both come from the entertainment industry you come more from a, a dance background i come from more from a, a singing background but yeah. you when you're a performer, you learn about the other um, art forms, I guess, um, yeah. because you you co-perform. Like I'll do, a sh I would do a show as a singer, and there would be a magician before me, right? 
And so I've performed with a lot of comedians, not at the same time, but like they're on and we're on or vice versa. And they always talk about their slot, taking their, oh, I got a slot at, that's sort of in their little um, micro world of the entertainment industry. And one of the times that we connected with George, I guess it is now, he said, I'll take that slot. And I thought, that's such a weird way to say it. The second time we said, who is this guy? He said, I'll take that slot. Oh, thought, my God. That's something only comedians, like uh, singers don't say I'll take that. It's because everything's slotted at the comedy clubs, right? It's like, I got the okay. 11 15 slot for 30 minutes or whatever, right? I love it. It's like he's been giving us teasers, like <clears throat> like little tidbits of information, you know, leading up to his sort of big, and he's almost like making a joke of it, like his big reveal or his big, his big entrance or his big moment, kind of like almost sarcastically in a way. But at the same time, he says, no, but don't get me wrong. Like he said, I'm, I'm really thankful. I'm really thankful for the opportunity to come through and to bring messages to all of you schleps. <laughs> schleps. Okay. <laughs> to all of you schleps from the other side. Yeah, he would say um, that. Would he say something like that? Oh, 100%. Okay, perfect. Then I then I know that I'm um, I'm sort of getting a, a a right or good feel of who he is because I just have to go with what I get. And uh, even though that sounded weird to me, if it makes sense that he would say it, that's that's awesome. Um, I'm just gonna see if he sort of wants to just kind of go. He's uh, I have a feeling I need to, a disclaimer because I have a feeling that there could be some foul language being used during this conversation. <laughs> Famously, we'll we'll beep it if we have to. Okay, because okay, um, yeah, because then he's like censorship. He's like rolling his eyes about censorship when you brought up censorship. Wait, he's you like, don't I'm know just... anything about George Carlin because you're nailing him. Like these are all the things that he actually spoke about in his comedy routines. Really? He talked no. about he he famously did the seven words you can't say on television. I can't oh. remember them all, but they're. They're the F word, the mother F word, like, okay. And he would rhyme them off in the show on purpose. Right. And it, the, that was like his, one of his most famous routines. He would analyze language, <laughs> which I love. He would an, analyze, like he would do 15 minutes just on the M F word. Like wow. just, just on the fact that it's just such a great compound word. It's something beautiful like mother. And then <laughs> something, you know, right. Oh, yeah, so he's, he's saying we're not we're not going to get that detailed about anything today. He wants to speak a little bit more generally, um, okay. just about like how fucked up the world is right now. Um, and he says, but the problem is, is everybody's scared by it. They're all like, Ooh, oh, the world's falling apart. Oh no, poor me. He said, like, pull up your effing bootstraps and realize that this is your chance to make a change, people. Like okay. this is this is the opportunity to step up to the plate and get shit done. Okay, um, he says, "Yeah, I know that's not funny, but it just what it is. What it is." <laughs> if you know, if you know his personality, if you picture those words coming out of his mouth, it actually is funny. Okay. That's exactly how he spoke, plain, plainly, and uh, without filter. Okay, so here we go. This is a little awkward for me. Not typically how I would uh, address people or speak to people, but that's oh, I've never that's heard you swear before, actually. What's that? I've never heard you swear before. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my, this is just me being the medium and allowing um, him to, to be authentic and okay. come through to you um, with authenticity. Um, so he's like, yeah, that guy's got to go. Um, and I see an image of Donald Trump. Right. Not, not Janet, not loving getting political. Um, not really my thing, but again, my job is a medium to just bring forward whatever I'm getting. Uh, and then he's almost telling me to kind of like suck it up. Like it's okay. Like if, if you're going to have a voice, you, you need to be willing to use it. There's this image of, it's really weird. It's like an image of um, like almost like a pillow and like just being ripped apart. And there's feathers flying everywhere. And he's like, that's what you people have to do. You have to get angry. You have to get aggressive. You've got to just rip that shit to shreds, let it fly, and then start to clean it up. 
she said, this is an opportunity, people. Um, yeah, stop being so afraid. Stop being so whiny. He's like, don't be so whiny about it. Like, you all want change. He says, you all want better. You all want for better. So do something about it, okay? So stop crying in the corner and get your shit together. Pull up your big, your big boy, big girl pants and do something about it. It's freaking time. And I don't know that he said freaking. He probably said. Yeah. But I, yeah. <laughs> I might have softened that way just a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so he sort of paused for a second. So, Joe, did you have anything to interject? <clears throat> well, He's, he was. He, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, he said, I left you a message. He wrote something. And you know, a funny thing is I actually feel like, like not that long ago, I might have had a, a post or something for, on my Facebook feed, come across my Facebook feed that had something to do with him, some sort of message from him. Um, he's like, yes, that. And he's like, that, that. So whatever's in that message, He's like, yes, that's it. Like that, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm saying to you. Yeah. He, he's like the big point that he just wants to bring forward is that, you know, so many people are crying about change and, and wanting things to be better. And so many people are like drowning in their own tears about their situation and their, their economical situation and their po political situation and their their daily lives he says but that requires change and that requires effort because change requires effort so stop wasting your effort on crying about it and just get to work like dig down deep inside of you learn what you need to do for you trust what you need to do for you and take action not what all these people are preaching at you to do. Not what the people with the bullhorns shouting their instructions. You decide. You decide what you need in your life to change your life for the better. Because when you do that, ultimately, that is going to affect change for everybody. So stop worrying about everybody else. Look at yourself. Dig down deep. Get in there and figure out what you need to do to change your life. That's what's going to be what heals this planet. That's what's going to be what heals you. That's what can, what's going to be what takes you out of that rut that you're so busy sitting and crying in. That's what it's going to take. So you have the opportunity now. So do it. Are you done, George? I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I just felt kind of disconnect for a sec. <laughs> wow, that was passionate. Yeah, that's how he spoke. Um, okay. Okay, so does he not see value in the protest? Some people call them riots. I think that's ridiculous. They're, the protests, they're happening more so in the United States. We, if people don't know, we're from Canada. Um, okay, and I think yeah, because he's like, yeah, because the States is, like, is where they're the most fucked up. Okay, that came um, from George. Yeah, we, we can mark this podcast explicit or we can... Beep it. I don't know which we'll do. Anyway, okay. um, so does he not see value in the protests going on in the United States right now? He's saying don't yeah, listen to the says, people with the bullhorns, right? Well, he says there's always value in information. He says, but there's no value if you're going to let people dictate to you. So that's the difference. It's like if you want to hear the information and take, take the information from these people, then go ahead. But the problem is when you choose to let them decide for you. When you choose to let them speak for you, that's the problem. So sure, take whatever information you want, gather as much as you can, but then you have to decide. Just towing the line or falling in line with what somebody else is preaching is going to get you nowhere, okay? Because you're preaching their beliefs. You're preaching their opinions. You're taking on what they're trying to say and what, what they're trying to change. You need to change for you. You need to change what you need changed. Okay? Okay. Um, can we play a game? <laughs> is he up for he a game? He kind of rolls his eyes, but um, <laughs> we can try. I want to get his opinion on a few things. Okay. 
So if I say a name of a person, would he give us his opinion on them? He says, well, you're going to have to see. Justin Trudeau, Canadian Prime Minister. He just laughs. <laughs> he just laughs. Pretty boy. He calls him pretty boy. He needs to be a little less concerned about his hair and more concerned about his country. He says, moving on. Well, this is the obvious question, uh, Donald Trump. That's interesting. It went completely quiet. He, he just said he will not put me through that. He's like, he can't even begin to speak because he can't put me through that because he knows it's my job to, and he's, he's actually sad. Like, he's welling with tears. He's so disappointed. He's so sad. But he's like, if I get angry and if I speak my truth, I can't do that to you, he says. And then he says, moving on. Okay. I'm going to throw a random person out there, someone you, Janet, may not know. I'm just curious what he says. Okay. Bol Bolsonaro. I just heard, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I, Janet, have no idea who that is, but that was his response. Okay, I have another, just a, no more game. I have a question for him. Okay. George Carlin was famously an atheist. Um, he says, oh, he's interjecting already. He, can, he, he says, because it's not about God. He said, I was tired of people trying to shove God down my throat. It's about what you believe, not what others tell you you're supposed to or have to believe. It's about what you believe deep inside of you at your core. Stop looking outward. Stop looking for someone else to tell you how it's supposed to be. Find your truth within yourself. He says, that's the spirituality that I'm into or that I dig or something like that, like almost like a cool term. That's what I'm into. Figure it out for yourself. And if that makes me an atheist, he says, then it does. He says, but it doesn't make me not connected to something bigger or something else. He said, it's just, I choose, I chose to look inward to define that, to decide what that was. I didn't let anybody else tell me. He says, you might have guessed, I don't like people telling me what to think. Okay. Any other messages from uh, George Carlin? He says, I loved my wife like I loved no other. So regardless of what may have transpired in life, um, in his situation with that relationship, um, <clears throat> he, there was a love for her that was just beyond, like it was beyond definition, he says. Um, and it just feels like he just wanted that opportunity to, to share that. I, it almost comes across like there was, there were some issues there or some things that came up, um, regarding his relationship. Um, that's just my impression, um, that I'm getting from his statement, but, uh, it just feels like it's important for him to say that just sort of asking if there's anything else that he really wants to, to say. And he's like, no, like I, I spoke my piece. You, you heard what I needed to say today. He said, it's, it's up to you guys. Or he says people, he keeps saying people. It's up to you people. Does he have any, I think he has a daughter. Does he have any messages for her? I'll send her an email. He says, no, he says, that's, nope. He's like, nope, that's not what this was about today. This was about okay. the people. Yeah, this was about the people. Okay, two more topics I'd like to get his view on if he's willing. He seems a little like he just wants to talk about what he wants to talk about, which is totally <laughs> different. And he goes like this, he goes like, are you surprised? <laughs> he's a, he's a, he's surprised. I'm not shocking anybody here. I'm I'm still me. I might be dead, but I'm still me. He says. 
I, I don't know. Like we're still exploring you and I, we've, we've heard different opinions on like time and, and people say, Oh, can't um, medium see into the future. And it, it's um, I think we've sort of come to the conclusion, you and I, that the future is actually fluid and, and sort of changing. But at this point in time, can you give us a prediction on the American election in 2020? It's Trump versus Biden. So he, far. Just says, he says, you people just need to get your shit together. You just need to get your shit together and stop whining and crying in the corner and pull up your bootstraps or your big girl pants and boy pants, like he, I think he said that earlier, and get out there and make a change. He said, change isn't going to happen from your couch. And can you give us any insight on the pandemic? Needed. Absolutely 100% needed. Needed? Needed. needed. He said, what else was going to shake up this world? What else was going to wake everybody up from their fucking sleep? Like, it's time to get on with things. The way things were is not sustainable. It's not the way things can continue to be. So what else was it going to take? Yeah, and he's like, yeah, that's how bad off we were. That's how bad off we are. And he says, I'm not even going to say are anymore. He says, because already... Things are shifting and people are waking up and people are realizing and people are starting to take action because action is what's going to make the change. So, yeah, he says, need it. And he said, you better pray, pray for all of those souls who chose to leave to help make the point. He says, don't worry about them. They're good. He says, they're here. They're here with me. This is a good place to be. He said, but you all owe them. You all owe them gratitude. Okay, this is a very intense episode for me. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, he was an intense guy. And I'm really just, even though I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone, I'm really just trying to honor him by delivering what he is giving me. For me, visually, um, he shows up in like, um, like longer sort of, what are those called? They're not called khaki shorts, like... Um, combat shorts like not combat like like a tan sort of color longer short cargo i think that's it because they got the big oh, yeah. pop that's how he's showing to me with like sort of a worn white ish t-shirt that might have had something on it but it's a little bit worn he's and he, he looked visually like he had longer hair pulled back not at all clean cut like clean obviously like not a dirty, not looking dirty or anything like that, but just sort of a more of a rough around the edges, like more of a relaxed look. I would actually say relaxed, like just kind of cash and here I am, take it or leave it kind of a feeling and kind of a, a look. Yeah, that was pretty much him. I, I think, you know, he did his, he did his time slot. That's kind of, I think what the, uh, the, the purpose of today was. Um, and so maybe we'll just leave it, leave it at that. Okay. Thanks, George Carlin, wherever you are, for uh, yeah. guesting you, on the podcast. You are watching and or listening to Talking to the Dead with Janet Kubik, and we encourage you to subscribe on whichever platform you're joining us on. Help spread the word by sharing, and be sure to visit JanetKubik.com and sign up for her email list. Bye, Janet. <laughs> Bye. Thanks so much for checking in. Bye, George. <laughs> okay janet i found the recording that you were talking about sort of the quotation that you were talking about oh, okay this is george carlin life is not measured by the number of breaths we take but by the moments that take our breath away wise wise words uh -huh.